Today we're going to go over similar polygons. Uh, first, we need to know what a similar polygon is, and it is a polygon that has the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. And then we've got um, an example here, and these are similar polygons. They're specifically similar quadrilaterals, um, and they have um, corresponding angles and sides. The angles are the easiest one to, ones to see, and it's because that has one arc, and this one has one arc, this one has two arcs, and this one has two arcs. This one has three arcs and three arcs and then four arcs and four arcs. So those are all the corresponding ones. Um, that's similar to whenever we did congruent triangles. So um, angle A is congruent because the angles are congruent to angle W. Angle B is congruent to angle X. Angle C is congruent to angle Y, and angle D is congruent to angle Z. And then we have corresponding sides, um, and sides are always proportional. So um, yellow to pink, which is AB, has to be proportional to yellow to pink, which is WX on the other one pink to green, which is BC, it has to be proportional with pink to green, which is XY, green to purple on the left one has to be the same as green to purple on the right one, and then of course our last one, which is AD, yellow and purple, have to be with yellow and purple on the other one, which is WZ. Um, and then they always have a scale factor. So in this specific example, um, you figure it out by putting, I'm going to just do AD and WZ because that's the last one. So 18 over 6, which is 3. So it has a scale factor of 3. This one will be the same thing. Um, this symbol right here means similar. It's the um, symbol we use for similar. Um, and it tells you which angles are similar. So A goes with X. And just like with congruent triangles, B goes with Y. And C goes with Z. So corresponding angles is that angle A is congruent to angle X, angle B is congruent to angle Y, and angle C is congruent to angle Z. Um, your sides will be the same thing that we did before. So yellow to pink is AB. Yellow to pink on the other one is XY. Then pink to green is BC. And then on the other one, pink to green is YZ. And then yellow to, to green on the left. And yellow to green on the right is XZ. So very similar to what we did with congruent triangles, it's just now, and the angles are still congruent, which is what's supposed to happen, but now sides are proportional rather than congruent. And sides always have what's called a scale factor, which is the ratio of lengths of corresponding sides of two similar polygons. And then we have this example. So we have A, B, C, N, X, Y, Z. So it tells you, it gives you side A, B, and A, B is supposed to go with X, Y on the other side, which is there. So from A, B, C to X, Y, Z means that you have to put A, B, C on top, which is 6, 
two x, y, z that has to be on the bottom, which tells us the scale factor is two or two over one. If you go reverse, x, y, z comes first, and that has to be the one that goes on top, and then a, b, c goes on bottom, and then that scale factor is one half. And then we have to determine if these are similar. So we have this one arc. Those go together on both. Then we have the two arcs. So these are the ones that go together. And then the side with no arcs. So we're going to put all these um, in proportions and see if they all equal the same thing. So yellow pink is 12.5. And then yellow pink on this one is 10. Is that going to be the same as pink green, which is 11.5 on the left? And then pink green on the right is 9.2. And is that the same as yellow green, which is 15, over yellow green, which is 12? And are all of those going to give you the exact same thing? So let's try it out on this calculator and see what each of those gives me. 12.5 divided by 10 is 1.25. 11.5 divided by 9.2 gives me 1.25. And then 15 divided by 12 gives me 1.25. So that means that all of these equal 1.25. Um, really, it's more like, it really, we normally do it like this. 1.25 is what that gives me. This one gives me 1.25, and this one also gives me 1.25. So since all three of them are the same, then yes, they are similar. Alrighty, so on this one, we find the values of x and y for these similar triangles. So we have our one arc with our one arc. We have our two arc with our two arc, and then our no arcs together. All right, so yellow green is three y minus two, and then yellow green is five, and that should be equal to yellow pink, which is four, over yellow pink, which is two. So both of these should work out the same. And we go back to elementary, um, maybe, maybe middle school, where you cross multiply. And so you'll cross this way. Two times three y minus two is equal to five times four is 20. Divide both sides by two to get rid of that. 3y minus 2 is equal to 10. Add 2 to both sides. 3y is equal to 12. Divide by 3. And y is 4. Now we need to find x, and we're going to do it the same way. So for x, that's pink and green, which is 6x minus 3. And then pink and green over here is 3. And then we're going to set up the same thing, yellow and pink, which is 4, over here, which is yellow and pink, which is 2, and then cross multiply. 2 times 6x minus 3, and then 3 times 4 is 12. Divide by 2 on both sides, which is 6. Add 3 to both sides. 6x is equal to 9. Divide by 6 on both sides, and 3 will go into both of those, which gives me 3 halves for x. And then our very last example, if these two polygons are similar, find the scale factor of the two um, from this one to that one. So my um, this one has to be on the top, and this one has to be on the bottom because it specifically says from N MNPQ to XYZW, and the perimeter of each polygon. 
So to find the scale factor, you just need to figure out which sides are the same. So from W to X, we have something on the left one. So W and X is the first and last letter of the name of that polygon. So the first and last letter for the name of the other polygon is MQ. And MQ is right here, which is 8. So to figure out the scale factor, remember that the right one has to be on top. You do 8 over 4, which means that the scale factor is 2. All right, so to find the perimeter of MNQP, that's easy, okay? Oh, this goes with this one. I'm going to need that for later. Um, to find the perimeter of MNPQ, you just add them all together. So 10 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 is 34. Um, so for the other one, to do the perimeter, we need to figure out what its side lengths are. So if I go from here to here and multiply times 2, that's what happened between the 4 and the 8. We multiplied the 4 times 2 to get 8. Then to go from here to here, we divide by 2. It's the opposite, right? To get from 8 to 4, you would divide by 2. So now we just need to figure out what these sides go with and divide them all by 2. So M, N are the first two letters. So the first two letters over here is x, y. And we have to divide 9 by 2, which is 4.5. And then we have n, p, which are the middle two letters of the first one. So the middle two letters of the second one are y, z. And divide 10 by 2, and that gives me 5. And then, of course, the last one that's left are the ones that go together, divide 7 by 2, and you get 3.5. So the perimeter of x, y, z, w is 4 plus 4.5 plus 5 plus 3.5, which gives me 17. So here's something that's kind of cool. If I find the scale factor of these perimeters, it also gives me 2, which is the same thing as the scale factor of the sides. So the perimeter scale factor and the sides scale factor will be the same. And that's the end of our notes.